Are back bends contraindicated? In other words, not safe in people with fibromyalgia? For the answer, stay tuned. Fibromyalgia is a painful, chronic medical condition. People often have poor sleep, and they can't do many of the activities they like to do because they simply don't have enough energy, and they can often get depressed about that. Um, and uh, the question that somebody sent in was that they had heard that back bends are contraindicated, that are, in other words, not healthy, potentially risky for people with fibromyalgia. And they wanted to understand why that was. I would also like to understand why that is, because as far as I know, there's no reason why all back bends should be off limits for everybody with fibromyalgia. Now, it may be for some people who are really in a bad state, where their nervous system is really depleted, where their batteries are pretty much empty, where any kind of strong stimulation, including the kind that many back bends can give you, can be too much. Okay, and one of the problems with fibromyalgia is that you may feel more energetic some days, and when you get that boost of energy, you may feel like you want to get a whole bunch of stuff done that you haven't been able to get done on the other days when your energy was less. And the problem that many people discover is the next day and sometimes for the next few days after that kind of splurge of energy that people find they can't get out of bed. They're completely debilitated. Okay, so you really want to avoid that. So what's crucial in yoga for fibromyalgia is to carefully titrate, adjust the amount you do based on how you feel. Now, when you first start yoga, you may not be that plugged into your body. You may not know what's going to work for you and what isn't going to work for you. So number one, you want to build your sensitivity to feeling what's happening in your body, assessing your energy levels, etc. Uh, through your yoga practice, uh, through awareness, through mindfulness, meditation, other practices can also help. And of course, meditation is part of yoga. So all these things to improve our sensitivity to what's happening in our body. Okay, so that's number one. Um, number two is that we then want to adjust our practice based on how we're feeling a particular day or the particular time of day we come to practice. Uh, rather than say, I'm going to do 15 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day or 30 minutes four times a week, whatever it might be, that's too prescriptive. And it may not work for a condition where energy levels go up and down. So better to tune in, notice how you feel while you're practicing. And in fact, you may, even if you thought you were pretty energetic at the beginning of the practice, notice that you really don't have much in the tanks and you may want to, at that point, just switch to a gentler practice, maybe do more restoratives, etc. cetera. Um, or conversely, you may notice that you felt kind of tired, but after you do a few poses, you start feeling a little more energetic. Maybe you can do a bit more. But I want to stress that word bit because we don't want to do too much and bring on that rebound effect where you may be debilitated the next day or the next several days. Okay, so we slowly titrate our practice and that practice absolutely can include some gentle back bends. But we have to remember that many people with fibromyalgia 
because they're so depleted, anything that's a strong stimulus to the sympathetic nervous system, which can be psychological stress, which can be a poor night of sleep, which, which can be very stimulating back bends or even gentle back bends if you're not accustomed to doing back bends, any of these things can strongly stimulate the sympathetic nervous system that may set you back. Now we do want to learn how to stress the sympathetic nervous system over time, but we do that by slowly, slowly, slowly building up how much we do over time, over months and even years, build up, build up, build up. And anytime we notice we're feeling worse or we've taken a step back, back off. By the way, we don't want to just pay attention to the feedback during our practice or immediately after our practice, but we want to start to notice how we feel the next day because that's how you can determine, oh, I thought what I did yesterday on my yoga mat was fine, but I'm worse today. Mm, that could be partially from the yoga. So start to notice those longer term connections as well with how you're feeling. And uh, this is a disease where people lose hope, but I have seen people with the kind of program I'm describing, where you back off, where you refill your batteries, sometimes for quite a long time, and then slowly inch your way up to activity, people can have remarkable improvements in how they feel. Okay, all for today. Thanks much. Namaste.